Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing quite a different video. A few weeks ago, Makeup Revolution came out with another sub-brand called Planet Revolution, and ever since, I have just been really curious about A, how many sub-brands does Makeup Revolution have, and what are they, and what is the purpose of all of them, and B, why do they have so many sub-brands? And is this kind of standard business practice, or is this something new and kind of strange? I mentioned in a BWOW like the idea of like doing a research video about this and quite a few people were really interested so what I've done is compiled a bunch of information on A, what are all the sub brands of Makeup Revolution and B, why do I think they have so many. <laughs> After doing all of my research and putting together this video I feel like I have like a much better understanding of like where Makeup Revolution is coming from and why they have so many brands so I hope I can present this all <laughs> present all this information because it is quite a lot to you guys today. The video will be split up into two main parts, basically the first part explaining what all the sub-brands of Makeup Revolution are, and then the next part explaining in general terms what a sub-brand is, and then just kind of tying everything in together at the end. So make sure you check the description box for A, all the resources. I looked up a lot of articles, a lot of websites, a lot of links, all that will be down below, as well as timestamps. So if you want to skip around, say you just want to know like what a certain sub-brand is, you can skip to that part. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in first with a review of all of Makeup Revolution sub-brands. So as of filming, and I am filming this in early July of 2021, Makeup Revolution has nine sub-brands. Nine. <laughs> There's the original Makeup Revolution, also known as Revolution, Revolution Skin Care, Revolution Hair Care, Revolution Pro, I Heart Revolution, XX Revolution, Planet Revolution, Reloved by Revolution, and Makeup Obsession. That's a lot. That, that is a lot. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do a quick review of each one of those sub-brands. And by quick, I mean probably not that quick. Starting off with Makeup Revolution. This is the original line of makeup from the original Makeup Revolution brand. You'll see most of their affordable staple products under the sub-brand, including some of my favorite foundations and concealers. I'm actually wearing one of my favorites, the Fast Base Stick Foundation. That is under this of this sub-brand of the rest of the sub-brands. To me, this feels like your basic like essentials kind of brand where you get all your essential products, but nothing too flashy or too out there or too quote unquote fun. Because essentially, that's what the rest of the sub-brands are for. Revolution Skincare and Revolution Hair Care. I'm clumping these together because to me, they just, they're pretty self-explanatory and they make the most sense as sub-brands. Makeup Revolution originally spun these brands out to carry their products focused, of course, on skincare and hair care, which is done by many brands, like see Fenty's, Fenty Beauty, Fenty Skin, Fenty Hair, for example. Like I said before, these brands make the most sense to me as you're breaking products apart by the basic product type. Moving on to Revolution Pro. This sub-brand focuses on products that are slightly more expensive, and I mean only like slightly, than the Revolution brand and are aimed more at social media makeup artists or those who want to be social media makeup artists. There's glitzy packaging that is begging to be photographed for every single product. Essentially, these products to me, they're photo like they're products that are like meant to be Instagrammed essentially. Some products included in the sub-brand are bedazzled eyeshadow quads, a fancy flower-shaped highlighter, a goddess glow fixing spray, and multiple face palettes, including blush, bronzer, and highlighter. Moving on to I Heart Revolution. This brand seems to be aimed at the younger tween makeup lovers demographic. This sub-brand includes a lot of traditionally kitty makeup um, that is food or that is food themed or food scented, as well as random Disney collabs and Disney products. So like looking at this, this is kind of like the makeup you would expect to see like at Claire's. However, this brand is not just makeup. It also includes various body care products, including bath bombs, body lotions, body scrubs, and nail polish. This sub-brand also includes most of their dupe products, i.e. their chocolate palettes that are meant to dupe the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. Essentially, this brand is everything you would ever want to bring to a sleepover if you were 12 years old. Or me. That's what I would want to bring to a sleepover when I was 12. <laughs> Moving on to XX Revolution. The XX here stands for Skincare XX Makeup, which, okay, it's a concept, I guess. <laughs> Essentially combining the benefits of traditional skincare with makeup products you know and love. According to the XX Revolution website, quote, a new beauty brand for a new decade, XX Revolution leads the evolution of skincare and makeup into one. Explore an extravaganza of colorful eyeshadows, full coverage concealers, matte and glow foundations in 55 shades, skin perfecting primers and setting sprays, plus earth shattering highlighters, bronzers, and blushers for every skin tone, unquote. Essentially to me, this seems like it was 
kind of brought out at the beginning of like the skincare fad or the skincare trend. And so they went to jump on that trend with this little sub brand that essentially combined uh, skincare properties with makeup. Moving on to Relove by Revolution, which, ooh, what... And I gotta admit, the names here, they're, I've been researching them for a bit, so like they kind of stand out to me now, but like for the first time going through all of these brands, you're just gonna mix them all up, just right out the gate. Anyway, so Relove by Revolution. This sub-brand that was launched a few months ago-ish is described as every single thing for everybody. Every product from the sub-brand is supposed to be five pounds and under, which is around $6.92 as of today, making this sub-brand the cheapest, most affordable sub-brand with very minimal and basic packaging. Looking at the products, I got a very wet and wild kind of feel to their um, basic packaging and eyeshadow aesthetic especially. I believe this sets up three tiers of pricing for Revolutions, with Relove by Revolution kind of at the bottom tier, the original Revolution brand kind of being right there in the middle, and then with the top being kind of the Revolution Pro products. So they're trying to cover those basic kind of pricing demographics while still being in general drugstore priced. Moving on to Makeup Obsession. So this one is, I believe here is where it starts to get like a little unnecessary or overlappy. <laughs> in my opinion. Makeup Obsession subbrand focuses on color and the latest trends. Here you will find a cannabis themed makeup collection, which was a huge trend a year or so ago, bright funky eyeshadow palettes, and influencers showcased the most often. Um, while researching and looking up these websites and these Instagrams and everything, this is the brand where I saw the most influencers. And I think if they do any collabs, I know they've done some basic influencer collabs with their other subbrands, but as far as showcasing influencers specifically, I saw it the most often with this brand. And it's because I believe this brand is focusing so much more on like the latest trends and getting products out, kind of like ColourPop. Hey guys, editing Monica here. I don't think I clarified my point here well enough. What I meant to say is that it's more micro influencers and kind of everyday customers are showcased the most through makeup obsession. Anyone, if they do a collab with like a larger influencer, anyone over like half a million or a million followers, they're in their main Makeup Revolution brand, if that makes sense. Especially now, I think they just come out with a brand new like third round of collabs with Soft. It's like Soft something something and it just came out on their Makeup Revolution regular Instagram. So you'll see like bigger influencers on like their main channel-ish <laughs> and then you'll see smaller and kind of everyday consumers featured more often in this sub brand. According to the official Makeup Obsession website, quote, Our makeup brings you the latest beauty trends and is designed to inject color into our fast-paced social world. We aim to empower you and inspire creativity, whether you're looking for everyday essentials or a complete makeup bag makeover. There is something for everyone in our expansive collection of eyeshadow palettes, from bright and bold rainbow hues to everyone's favorite neutrals, all delivering ultimate pigment and payoff. Complete your look with our iconic blush palettes, Boss Brow products, beaming highlighters, and so much more, unquote. So yes, in my opinion, the Makeup Obsession brand is really, it's kind of like their version of ColourPop. If anything is trendy, they're gonna jump on it, they're gonna get those products out and in the hands of influencers as quick as they can. And last but not least, we have the sub-brand that started my research, Planet Revolution. Planet Revolution is the newest sub-brand focused on sustainability. According to the Planet Revolution website, quote, Planet Revolution offers clean formulations, conscious packaging, and affordable choice. It's clean evolution beauty. Vegan, cruelty-free, a considered product edit, mm, <laughs> simplified formulations, free from unnecessary ingredients, sustainable and upcycled ingredients wherever possible, responsible packaging, unquote. From what I personally saw on social media after this brand was announced, most people were curious as to why this needed to be a sub-brand, you know, and why they didn't just take these practices and kind of apply them to all of their sub-brands, right? Because you, you would think that that would make the most sense if you're actually trying to make sustainable change. But here's the rub, that's not the point of the brand. The point of the brand is to make money. The point of the brand is to target marketing to people that do care about the environment and want to be more conscious consumers. So that is the real goal, selling products to these people with these 
morals and viewpoints and not about actually making sustainable change. And I believe that's the core of these sub-brands. Makeup Revolution creates so many sub-brands and so quickly because they want to have products available for every makeup niche so that literally no matter what type of makeup or skincare or hair care that you're looking for, they have a product sitting there waiting for you. Another great point that I saw in my research is that the sub-brand model also lends itself to many marketing avenues. Instead of just having one Instagram page for Makeup Revolution that you can do influencer marketing or anything through, now you can have nine Instagrams, nine Twitters, all over TikTok, because you can have one for each brand. And each one can be different with the way that they do their social media marketing in order to target specifically the demographic they're looking to target. So to move on and answering the question, why does Makeup Revolution have so many sub-brands? I feel like we need to take a little bit of a dive into exactly what sub-brands are and how traditional companies use them. So let's move on to the next part. For a basic definition, I looked into this article from fabricbrands.com titled, What is Sub-Branding Breaking Down Brand Architecture? Quote, in a standard sub-branding strategy, the company shares some fundamental factors of their personality and image with the newly formed entity. There are various unifying factors that are common within all of the brands created by the same parent company, such as the messaging, the color palette, typography, imagery, marketing campaigns, and logo. However, there's still some freedom to differentiate each sub-brand so that it can resonate more effectively with a target audience. Good sub-brands are connected to a very specific niche audience. In almost all cases, the aim is to provide successful companies with a new way to build stronger bonds with their existing customer base and expand into new revenue streams at the same time. So I feel like that last sentence is the most important part. In almost all cases, the aim is to provide successful companies with a new way to build stronger bonds with the existing customers and to expand into new revenue streams at the same time. So it's kind of the lowest risk, highest reward way of getting more money, more revenue streams, building new audiences. And this is done by many companies across all sectors. For example, Porsche and Volkswagen, Technically, they're sub-brands because they have the same parent company. Same with Coke, Coke Zero, Diet Coke, all technically sub-brands under the Coke umbrella. Another super informative article that I found was from Glossy.co, written by Emma Sandler, titled Why Beauty Brands Are Developing Sub-Brands. And this was specific to beauty brands. The article states, quote, the impetus for the creation of sub-brands is largely the hyper-segmentation within beauty, which exists across other industries too, said Courtney Scherf, SVP of Research Services for Consumer Insights Group Trend Hunter. Because brands have intentionally carved out specific consumer types, think of the distinctive no-makeup makeup look and archetype of Glossier Girls, those brands then have to develop new brands to expand their appeal to different consumers. And while some brands like cosmetics brand Too Faced are trying to branch out into new categories like skincare within their core brands, the transition can be difficult for consumers to accept and therefore gives brands more reason to try and start from scratch. Continuing the quote, consumers today expect brands to reflect who they are and who they want to be. So if a brand like Glossier were to branch out to glamorous, highly pigmented makeup without that separation of a sub-brand, they could very well end up alienating the fan base that drove their initial popularity, end quote. So that right there answers what to me was the biggest question, which is why sub-brands in the first place? The whole point is to not alienate the customers you already have. So like a better example in my eyes is say if Kindness Vegan Beauty with Vegan Beauty and Kindness and Vegan Beauty decided to stop with their really kind of goth aesthetic packaging and instead come out with bright pink everything. You're gonna go ahead and alienate everyone who followed them for that original aesthetic, like moi. <laughs> so instead, they would then create a different sub brand to put everything under there, which is exactly what ABH and Norvina should have done from the very beginning. That is actually a big reason why a lot of their first Norvina releases kind of flopped. It's because they didn't differentiate, oh, this is a sub brand from the beginning. They kind of, and I think they did this on purpose, they were trying to slide it in under the original ABH brand, but when it didn't do so hot, they're like, oh no, we're gonna make it a sub-brand, which to be honest, they should have made it a sub-brand from the beginning. So what is unique about Makeup Revolution and their sub-brands? This is my opinion. Throughout my research, I've seen all these other companies and examples of sub-brands, but no one, no other company has had the pace 
of new brands, new sub-brand, either acquisitions or creations as Makeup Revolution. So Makeup Revolution is essentially taking a standard business model that companies use to build portfolios over years and even decades and condensing that time to months. So what I think, in essence, Makeup Revolution has applied the fast fashion model, which has already been proven to work really well in the beauty and especially the makeup space, to their sub-branding strategy. And that is why it feels and seems like so many more brands are coming out from Makeup Revolution because they literally are taking something that typically other brands you would see happen once every couple of years. They're coming out with a new sub-brand like every eight months to a year. So in my opinion, to answer the question, why does Makeup Revolution come out with so many sub-brands so often, is that they are following a standard business practice, but at a fast fashion pace which makes it seem and feels excessive to the average consumer, including moi. (laughs) So my personal final thoughts, I'm glad I did this. I I understand Makeup Revolution a bit more. I still don't think it's really necessary, which helps make me a more conscious consumer. So ultimately, I had fun with this and I think it was worth it. And I'm glad that I learned everything that I did. My big takeaway is that I feel like in order to be a conscious consumer in the way that I want to be a more conscious consumer, um, a certain level of research is going to be needed. And I think that as consumers, we need to be a little bit more critical of these brands, like especially with Planet Revolution that I mentioned earlier, they're preaching and like promoting like these sustainable messaging and everything, but really, ultimately, they're just creating more waste. And they're really only putting that brand out to target people who have those values so that those people will buy their stuff. When in actuality, the overall brand of Makeup Revolution isn't doing almost anything to be sustainable or good for the environment. They're just tr- creating this one little sub-brand full of products that they may or may not b- make actually sustainable to sell. Capitalism. So yeah, I had fun doing this. I hope you guys liked it. I know it was different and I know editing this is going to be a little bit different. So I hope you guys liked the video. I also wanted to say um, thank you to LS. Her like really well-researched videos really inspired this one. Um, and I'll probably take some pages from her book on editing this at well. So if you haven't seen any of LS's like deep dive brand history videos, please check those out. They are so informative, especially for someone who really didn't get into makeup until like 2015. I just, I love learning about makeup history. So make sure you check out her channel. Once again, all of my resources, links to all the articles that I read through are in the description box down below. Let me know what you guys think about Makeup Revolution down below. And I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.